In version 1.14, Knife Eye added some significant features. One of the most important, the security features that are implemented by default. Knife Eye will start up with HTTPS instead of HTTP, as in the past, and will generate an initial user and password for you to be able to log in securely. Knife Eye also provides us with the ability to create user authentication using lightweight directory access protocol, Kerberos, OpenID, SAML, Fachinox, and JSON web tokens. But what if we don't want any of this and we want to use the latest Knife Eye processor and also use the legacy authorized user that takes advantage of self-generated certificates? So in this tutorial, we're going to set up a secure Knife Eye installation using self-generated certificates. First, make sure you download the latest Knife Eye. I already have it downloaded, so I'll unzip and we're gonna unzip it in a folder called opt nifi prd3. Great, let's navigate to it. Let's jump into this folder and move everything one level down. Delete the empty folder. So before we do anything and we change configuration and we start nifi, we have to generate some certificates and keys. So for that, we're going to use the NiFi toolkit. If you don't have NiFi toolkit installed, you can follow the link in the description where I demonstrate how you can install the NiFi toolkit. So I have the NiFi toolkit installed in, in OPT NiFi toolkit, and we're going to go to the bin directory and we're going to use the TLS toolkit.sh. So if you want to get more information about this tool and how to use it, just type help. And here you're provided with four options. For this example, we're going to use standalone option. We're going to generate a certificate that's going to be accessed by localhost. In this case, we're going to use this certificate to load it in our browser to access an instance on our localhost. The certificate client password is going to be client password. And we're going to generate a client certificate suitable for the use in the browser with a specified DN. So for this one, we're going to call it DN inside byte, comma organization demo one note here this it's a sensitive so you have to be very careful with this value yeah next we're gonna flag it all and we're gonna tell it that i want you to put all the things that you're gonna generate which are the key and certificates into this location let's run it right so now let's navigate to that location and let's review what he did. We can see that we have our certificate password. So if we're going to do a cat CN and password, it should be client password. And then we have our client certificate that we will import into our browser. If we navigate to localhost, in this folder, we have the key store, the trust store, and a NiFi properties file that he generates for us. So if you're going to go and review this NiFi properties and we navigate to key pass, we can see that he pre-configured the key store password, the key password, and the trust store password that he generates. If we're going to go to port, we can see that he will update the port to be at 9443, and the host is going to be localhost. So what we're going to do next, we're going to change some properties in this NiFi property file. First, we're going to go to NiFi security user authorizer and we're going to change this one from single user to manage authorizer all right so here we want to remove the single user authorizer value and we're going to populate with manage authorizer and here for our nifi security user login provider we're going to leave it empty next we're going to go to the certificate location and we're going to we want to make sure that we give it the full path so you remember it was opt forward slash nifi pid pid3 copy this path and do the same for the trust store once you've done all of those save and exit and we're going to copy this nifi properties file from this location and we're going to overwrite the current nifi properties file from the configuration folder now that we've done that, next thing, we have to update the security property key. And how do we do that? Well, with this one, we're going to use the nifi.sh script. It's going to be opt, full path to the binary of our nifi installation, nifi.sh, set sensitive properties key. And here you have to give it a string of 12 digits. Press enter. It's up to you what's going to be the value. Right. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to import the key into our browser. So for this example, I'm going to use Chrome. So you can go to Chrome settings and here 
type certificates. In my case, since I'm on a Mac, he's gonna open my key chain access here in the certificate you want to click on this button here and navigate to your location where you have generated the certificate i will click and then select the p12 file here you're going to be asked for the password that we put at the beginning if it's going to be client password press ok and we can see that we have a key installed here let's close this one and before we start our nifi we got to make sure we make some changes to the authorizations xml we're gonna edit our authorizer.xml file so this file we have three parts we're gonna change the user grouping providers the policy providers and the authorizers so let's navigate i've already made the changes i'll just walk you guys through them so when you get to the user provider property all you have to do for the initial user identity you have to set the cn that we've generated the certificate for so you will also find the code in the github repository that but make sure you update the authorizer file let's navigate to the next part access policy provider with the access policy provider property you have to set the initial admin identity as your initial cn created and the node identity one being created and finally we want to change the authorizer so the authorizer is going to have to be the manage authorizer and the file access policy provider and at the end i want you to comment the authorizer using the single user authorizer so basically just comment this snippet in your configuration save and exit now we can go ahead and start our nifi instance and press start after start two files will be created the users.xml and the authorization.xml so basically the user.xml will carry the identifier for our initial identity and this identifier will then be associated with authorizations if you see the same identifier id basically this is the user that and this is how it's represented in nifi system will receive this particular resources will get access to a policy that will give him access to read action read flow write restrictive components read tenants write tenants read policies write policy read and write controller and write proxies to now so by now we should be able to access the nifi ui we're going to open a browser and we're going to navigate to https localhost 9443 and nifi here you're going to be prompted with a certificate that we've just loaded so just say okay and type been the keychain password for your host in my case my user local user password not the certificate password guys press enter and now we get access to the nifi ui if you want to debug any issues that you might have with logging in with a certificate so what do you want to do you want to navigate to your logs folder and here we have this log called nifi users so let's tail this file and see what happens so if you see here every action that we will do in the front end it will be exposed here so if i would do to if i would say okay do a refresh you can see there's a series of api i've done against my user the same way if you get an error you will be prompted with the message in the log all right so in the next tutorial we're going to see how we can set up multiple users using certificates so we're going to add a new user we're not going to provide them with privileges or we're going to remove privileges from them we're going to have scenarios where you want to have a single user that will be able to manage all the flows you want to have a user that will only get access to read you're going to have users that are allowed to actually review the data in the queue so i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial for all the resources that we covered in this tutorial you'll find them in the github repository along with the code that you can copy and paste to generate your certificate and set up your secure installation